Director, Professor Ebol, the members of the Senate, dear Dean, uh, Professor Kreins, it's, uh, I'm overwhelmed. Uh, it's, I'm very proud of being bestowed upon me this uh, honorary title, and I see it as an obligation to promote the relations between your university and the new medical faculty and uh, the University of Munich, and I will do all in my power to uh, help establish strong medicine in Maribor. I would like to thank very much to my friend, Professor Kreins, for your wonderful laudatio. I could have listened to you much longer. <laughs> and um, uh, so to, today I would like to speak about some of our work which we are doing in Munich, in Germany, uh, about uh, skin cancer. And therefore, I will shift a little bit the perspective of uh, the lectures at this meeting. I'm something of a, a exotic person here. I'm one of the few physicians speaking at this meeting. I think it's the only purely medical lecture. So we will shift a little bit the interest, the perspective towards the suffering of the individual patient and what the dermatologist can do today uh, for uh, patients uh, aff um, affected by skin cancer. I just want to open my lecture here. And I will speak today about a special type of skin cancer, about the basal cell carcinoma. Maybe we can lower a little bit the light. Um, and um, th uh, the reason why I'm speaking about this cancer because it's the most common cancer of men. It's, the, it's more common than all other cancers of men together. So there is a sheer, uh, that this sheer frequency makes it such an important uh, disease. Uh, not only for those who are suffering from disease, but also for the society, because it's so common, it costs a lot of money, and it causes a lot of uh, problems for, not only for the patient, but also for the society. The disease has been described by a Hungarian uh, dermatologist, Eden Krompecher, in 1903, so we have known this disease for more than 100 years. But the disease is not new. It has been already uh, shown in old atlases of dermatology in the 19th century. And there is no big difference in the presentation, uh, uh, clinical presentation, between 19th century and today. This is a patient whom we saw a couple of years ago. And this is another example, an atlas of the Bierge and a patient whom we seen several years ago in Düsseldorf. So the clinical presentation did not change. What changed is the incidence. It, the, the, the disease became extremely common. This may be due to several reasons. Um, the most common is in Australia, where uh, European population lives under tropical conditions with a lot of ultraviolet exposure, so, ultra, so environmental influences, um, uh, the increase in uh, uh, ultraviolet irradiation on Earth's surface, the ozone deficiency are major contrib uh, contributing factors. Um, in the United States, about one million of, of uh, people were suffering in one year. And Basal cell carcinoma represents half of all cancers uh, diagnosed in the United States. So it's extremely common and the incidence is increasing worldwide. So it's a very, very important cause of suffering and it's also an important cause of large costs to society. Not everybody gets basal cell carcinoma, although we all are exposed to ultraviolet irradiation. So there are some individual risk factors. For example, skin type uh, one or two here, you see a notorious example, Boris Becker, the German tennis player. He, uh, because of he belongs to a certain skin type, very blonde or reddish bl blonde people, uh, or other fr our friends from uh, Great Britain who give lectures here, they are at greater risk than people, for example, of Mediterranean extraction. Also, people who suffered from ionizing radiation, who smoke or have been exposed to environmental carcinogen, carcinogens, such as uh, arsenic, uh, are at greater risk. And also, people who uh, suffer from immunosuppression, for example, uh, patients who receive organ, organ transplants, and for, the, for this reason, they need to be put on a lifelong immunosuppression, they have a dramatically increased risk of skin cancer and also basal cell carcinoma. And basal cell carcinoma is predominantly an, um, a disease of older patients. 
and older people. But the most common, by far the most common reason is ultraviolet irradiation. And we are in a very lucky, uh, the researchers among us are in a very lucky position because this is one of the few cancers of humans where we know the cause. So it's, it is ideally suited for uh, uh, basic research into the pathophysiology of this disease. Now this is a young lady who is, in the, um, uh, who is in the process of acquiring a basal cell carcinoma. And this is the same lady 10 years later. And she suffered some changes. Uh, she has some skin aging and skin aging, the aesthetic problem of skin aging is also caused by ultraviolet irradiation. But if she takes her glasses away, you can see the basal cell, large basal cell carcinoma here. Um, uh, not only um, ultraviolet irradiation is the major cause, but also ionizing irradiation. This is a patient who, who was, has been irradiated for Hodgkin's disease 20 years ago, just in this area, and just in this area, he developed multiple basal cell carcinomas. And the major problem of basal cell carcinomas is that they are located mainly in the face because this is where we get irradiated by ultraviolet irradiation, by sunlight, and this makes the uh, surgical treatment of these um, cancers much uh, more difficult than if they were located in a, difficult, a different part of the body. Um, so this is the most typical localization, uh, the nose and the exposed parts of the, uh, um, of the skin, of the face. And the basal cell carcinoma can lead to terrible destruction. It is not a metastatic tumor. So usually it is not lethal. Its importance lies in its frequency. But it can lead to huge local destruction because it tends to infiltrate the tissue to grow into bones, not only to destroy skin, but also bony structures of the face. And of course, these patients come too late for treatment. There is no effective treatment so far, but I will show you some new developments where it may be within the foreseeable future possible to treat even such very advanced cases. This is a patient whom I treated a couple of years ago, and you can see here the pulsations of the arteries on the skull, so this tumor completely destroyed her bony uh, skull structures and uh, made these pulsations of the meningeal arteries visible. Of course, this lady didn't go for years to a doctor, so this is a very neglected case. It's quite an extreme case, but we see many more cases uh, which are of uh, uh, lesser extension. Now, how does this cancer arise? We know that ultraviolet irradiation plays a major role and it leads to mutations which finally develop into basal cell carcinoma. But as I told you, immunosuppressed patients have a very much higher frequency or incidence of basal cell carcinomas, so immunosuppression, immune surveillance also plays a major role. And we know that mutations can be repaired. So uh, either there is insufficient repair or patients even have some DNA repair defects which uh, then enable these mutations to develop into the basal cell carcinoma. And then there are some factors, individual factors, genetic predisposition and the individual skin type, as I showed you before, uh, which form the basis of an individual predisposition to develop this cancer. Like with every carcinogen, smoke and others, and not every person who is exposed to the carcinogen ultraviolet irradiation also develops a skin cancer. Well, a major a step forward has been made when it was this, when the genetic cause of a rare genetic disease, nevoid basal cell carcinoma syndrome, has been discovered. It is an autosomal dominant disease, and yet patients at young age develop multiple basal cell carcinomas. So this is a very atypical setting, and they develop skin involvement and also involvement on the central nervous system and skeletal involvement. You can see here, for example, the asymmetry of the scapulae. And they also get cancers outside the skin, namely in the brain, medulloblastomas. And it was discovered that the cause of this nevoid basal cell carcinoma syndrome is a mutation in a certain gene which is called PETCH. Now, PETCH is a part of a cascade, of a sig signal transduction cascade, and it's a tumor suppressor gene. If this tumor suppressor is mutated, sorry, 
if this tumor suppress is mutated, then this cascade can proceed further, this break doesn't function, and the people develop uh, skin cancer. PETCH is a homologue of a drosophila gene. There has been a Nobel Prize awarded uh, for the, this, this, uh, for the uh, investigations of the drosophila, various drosophila genes, which can be seen as a model for human disease. And you can see here that in this fly, which, had a, uh, which has a mutated PETCH gene, there is also a skeletal anomaly. She, uh, this fly has a, has a uh, uh, wing which is completely different uh, and degenerated compared to the wild type uh, uh, um, uh, fly. And the function of this gene is a tumor suppressor gene and a receptor of a certain protein. Now, we were, uh, my group has been interested if this genetic pathway is also involved in the much more common sporadic basal cell carcinoma. Not this very rare um, uh, genetic disease, but in the much more common um, uh, carcinomas in gen the general populations. And we showed in a large series of papers that, that mutations in this sonic hedgehog pathway um, are found in all basal cell carcinomas, all basal cell carcinomas. So today we know the cause of the tumor, the ultraviolet irradiation, and we know the mutation in every basal cell carcinoma. So it's a wonderful model also to perform research into the pathophysiology of this disease, of this tumor, and also to try to find novel uh, no, novel um, therapeutic approaches. And for this, uh, we, we also constructed a knockout, uh, 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 a, a knockout mouse, which is a model of human nav uh, nevoid basal cell carcinoma syndrome. This mouse also develops brain tumors. You can see here this protuberance. And if you irradiate this mouse uh, with ultraviolet, ultraviolet irradiation, you get multiple tumors. And in order to irradiate these mice, we constructed such a solarium where the mice, like the humans, they go like to go to the solarium and get skin cancer. These mouse, mice didn't do it voluntarily. We put them there, and then they developed these skin cancers, which we could uh, investigate. Now, interestingly, recently a new molecule has been developed, a therapeutic molecule, which is now available therapeutically, which inhibits this activated pathway, a small molecule inhibitor of this a mutated pathway, and it has been recently shown that this inhibitor is very effective in large basal cell carcinoma, which are not amenable to uh, surgical treatment. You can see here that these basal cell carcinomas are receding after pharmacological treatment. Usually you would do some surgery uh, on these tumors, but these tumors are simply too large. There is no surgical way to remove these tumors from these patients. This is a patient uh, for whom we, at, the, at the time when he came to me, we did not have any uh, possibility to treat him with this new inhibitor. He had a hobby of sailing, uh, uh, in a sunny climate, maybe uh, on the Slovenian coast, no, but probably it was Croatian. Uh, and um, uh, so, uh, and he came with this very strange hairstyle, and I asked him to remove the hair from his uh, 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 forehead, and he had this huge basal cell carcinoma, which had to be removed surgically, including the eye was infiltrated, the eye had to be removed, and then he received an epithesis and uh, he had a very good uh, cosmetic uh, result. Uh, another possibility which we developed um, in um, Dusseldorf many years ago is photodynamic therapy, where you apply a substance which sensitizes the skin and the cancer to um, a certain light. It's a photosensitizer, and you can irradiate the cancer with light, and this leads to the destruction of the tumor, and selective destruction. Here is a young patient with numerous basal cell carcinomas. If you perform surgery on her, that would lead to terrible destruction. And the tumors were completely healed with this photodynamic therapy. So this is a novel type, and here, for example, you can also diagnose the tumors by this photo, uh, photodynamic principle. You apply the substance, you don't know really where to do surgery, and you can, the su substance shows fluorescence 
after, upon irradiation, and you can mark the tumor for the surgeon to excise this tumor. Like here, for example, our surgeons did not know where to continue. They continued surgery, and still we, they found tumor in the histology. So we performed photodynamic diagnostics, showed where this tumor is located. This is the red fluorescence, and we could mark for our surgeons the, uh, the involved tissue. So these are great progresses, but of course, the major progress is not to treat the tumor, but the major progress is a prevention, and uh, the prevention here in this case is relatively easy, namely try to prevent yourself from ultraviolet irradiation. This, was, this would make, on the one hand, the dermatologists unemployed, but I'm quite, still quite optimistic because people some, simply don't follow these rules. They simply, uh, like with smoking, uh, although the carcinogen is known, the people don't avoid it. This is an ideal way of UV protection, but it is not... Uh, you, you, cannot really, you cannot really sell it to Central European consumers, uh, so we have to, uh, we have to um, divert our attention to, chemi to chemical protection, to sunscreens, and uh, this will, to a great extent, would, to a great extent, help uh, the people to prevent the cancer. So this would be the final solution to the problem, prevention, not only treatment. So this was a short excursion um, through the world of uh, skin cancer, just to give you a hint of what we are doing in Munich, and I will be very pleased to cooperate with uh, clinicians and scientists in Maribor, and I would like to uh, initiate some cooperations, both in the fields of basic science and of clinical applications, and try to uh, strengthen uh, the uh, medicine, both in uh, Slovenia and in Munich. Now, in order to stimulate uh, many people from, uh, from Maribor to come to Munich and visit us, I just would like to show some slides from where I come from, from Munich, just to give you an impression um, uh, where, is, uh, where we work. It's a, also a beautiful city like Maribor, very near the mountains. Uh, we all very much like skiing, so if you come and visit us, we can go together skiing, you can break your legs, and we have very good medicine, and we can, uh, we, we can, repair, we can repair you again, but not the dermatologist in this case. And we have, uh, this is the largest department of dermatology in the world. It is uh, the, the department which I am chairing, so we have quite a famous department of dermatology. We have two buildings, this building seven floors, and there is a small building three floors. So we have ten floors only for dermatology. So this is maybe a good idea for Maribor to try to build up such a hospital. But I'm not sure if the dean is very pleased with this proposal. Uh, and we have also very, you know, I will tell you how famous they are next Saturday if we, when we play in the Champions League finals. Uh, and we have people who like folklore, like in Maribor. So uh, if you visit us, we have the Oktoberfest, we have uh, folklore shows, and I'm sure that we will like also interacting with uh, the Bavarians. Uh, we are not Styrians, we are Bavarians. We have this Oktoberfest where we drink beer from one liter mugs, but of course everybody drinks at least five or six beers. Most people who come there are from Italy or America or Australians, but also there is a sizable number of people from ex-Yugoslavia, ex of course, uh, and uh, the, this is one of the many places on the Oktoberfest. Seven million people visited this Oktoberfest last in, the, for, in two weeks last year, and this year will be maybe some more. So I, I hope that Many of you will visit Munich and uh, be our guests. And in order to stimulate you, I brought a little present for the dean and for the rector. Namely, two beer mugs so you can practice already uh, before you visit us. And I hope that you will enjoy your visit to Munich as much as this young gentleman does. Thank you very much.